Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? I hope you're well. I am good. I'm out here with a box, has a couple plants in it that I thought would be fun to talk about. Really just more fun to open this package up together because what's in here, I don't, I don't need to jump around it. It's probably in the title of the video. These are the Musa Sycamensis Red Tiger. You know, I love some cold hardy bananas. <laughs> you can't really tell right now, but out here in the backyard, bananas, bananas, bananas grown lots of different types. I have a good amount of experience with a lot of them, with the Dwarf Orinocos, Rajapuris, the Lesiocarpas, and set Glockums, then probably a lot more. And the Bajus are what I have out here right now. And one of these clumps actually has some Orinocos mixed in with the Bajus. Sometimes I'll clump them together just because you only have so much space for bananas, you know? So why not order more? The Sycamensis are they're generally regarded hardy in like zone 7B, and up, but I've had plenty of success growing them here in zone six, just putting lots of mulch on them, making sure that they're in a spot where the snow melts quickly. That way I know it's a warm microclimate. They're a pretty cold hardy banana, one that I think is worth trying if you are in zone six. Zone six meaning minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit to zero being the average extreme temperatures for the winter. It very rarely gets that cold here. We hit minus five this year, but there's a weird thing going on that's not really normal but it does happen a few times anyways i know you're probably waiting for me to go ahead and get this box opened up but first i wanted to talk about the appearance of these bananas the sycamensis or the darjeeling banana typically gets about 14 feet tall has a really nice sheen to the foliage they're just really pretty bananas but there are some cultivars some different varieties within there there's the red tiger and the bengal tiger both of them have really nice red variegation on their foliage at least that's what you see in pictures online grown bengal tiger i've grown red tiger both from really reputable sources and i have never seen the extremely beautiful red variegated foliage like you see in most pictures online. I've, they should be up here on the screen. Hopefully you're seeing them right now. I feel those pictures kind of deceptive. I'm sure it happens and there are lots of things that can factor into what the leaves are going to look like on a plant, but usually I think a lot of these pictures are the Zabrinas or the Rojos and it's slightly photoshopped and just lies to sell things. There is a website that I found that has some really great honest pictures, what I would consider to be more honest pictures, it should be up here on the screen. And this is more what I've seen with these bananas. They'll have a nice maroonish color to the bottom sides of their foliage and then some red splotching along the leaves. But rarely, except for when they're pretty small, have I ever seen them really extremely variegated like and all the stuff I was just showing you before. Now I've already cut this open. That was just to get the address thing out of here to make it easier. So I'm not showing off my address to everybody. So I've had a slight peek in here, but I didn't do any digging around. And I know I'm really curious to see what's going on in here. I need to be really careful at opening this door. I don't want packing peanuts flying all over the place. They're not my favorites. I can already see just from looking right here, that looks like a pretty colorful leaf. And I'm very pleased that these were shipped with their pots. Actually, I got these off eBay. And I typically, when going for the, this type of banana, go for getting them from an online nursery because then I can kind of give it to them if they lied to me, you know what I mean? But they're sold out most places. What I've done before is gotten the Bengal Tiger from uh, Plant Delights Nursery. They're a reputable grower. I really trust them. And on their site and their description, they describe the Bengal Tiger as being a more colorful variety of the red tiger. I've heard other websites say that they're pretty much the same plant. And I gotta say, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. This is one of the more colorful ones that I've ever actually seen in person. A little wonky and floppy, but it's a baby and it just got shipped, so not shocked about that. I'll go ahead and open up the other one. We can have a closer look at both of them. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed here. I like the little cardboards that they did in there. The only critique I really have is that some wooden stakes probably put a bit of good idea to have those put in there so that these wouldn't get smushed around as they move in the package but overall as far as bananas are concerned if you've ever ordered bananas online this is pretty good it's not unusual for bananas to show up looking pretty sad and horrible really i'd say this is a win i like the way these look and i'm really happy that they're in pots because it's not time to plant these out into the ground yet whenever i'm considering planting out anything that's considered marginally hardy to where i live like these bananas right here I like to make sure to get them into the ground as early in the growing season as possible. The reason for this is that that's going to give the plant as much time as possible, a really long growing season to put their roots down and establish themselves and build up the energy that they're going to need to survive their first winter 
in the ground. And it's randomly darker now because I was just editing this video and realized that I forgot to make my point here. With the bananas, I don't like to put them into the ground until the ground temperatures are right around 68 degrees or warmer and air temperatures need to be in the 70s, preferably 80s, and that will get them off to a better start. I, there's no reason to stick them in the ground right now. The ground's really cold. It's mid-March. They would just throw a fit. It wouldn't be good for them to sink them down into that cold ground. It would really just set them back. So that's why I'll have them inside until things are warm enough to go ahead and place them out into the garden. With these, they'll die back to the ground or mulch them as heavily as possible. There are lots of different ways to protect bananas. That's a whole separate video, but I typically just leave about maybe 18 inches to two feet of the pseudo stem or the trunk, which do you want to call it that, and I'll cover that with a whole bunch of mulch. And that's usually it. Sometimes with something that's not as hardy, so if I were to be trying a banana that I wanted to get flowers out of, then I would wrap that with some frost cloth that I first soak in an anti-transpirant solution like wilt proof. That makes it water repellent. I'll put that around whatever trunk is left and then mulch it. I mean, that helps prevent some of the rot that comes along with having them in these big mulch balls in the ground during the winter time. Back to the Sycamensis red tigers. Look at these leaves. There aren't a lot of bananas you can grow in zone six that give you this kind of effect. I'm really liking how these are looking. I would be surprised if they hold this variegation, the strong variegation on them. The variegation as they mature will more than likely become more muted. That's what's typical with these types of bananas. Like I said earlier in the video, how you'll get just a nice green shiny leaf with some subtle red splotching in them. You never know, it could hold on to them. There are lots of factors that can influence variegation, sunlight, temperatures, soil conditions. Those are all factors to keep in mind. So earlier in the video when I was saying that a lot of the pictures are dishonest, that might be harsh. I can't say for sure that everybody out there is lying when they put these pictures up because at some point it's likely that they will have some nice variegation on them if they're the red tiger or the Bengal tiger. But the main thing to make note of is that rarely when looking at those pictures do you see any really big mature ones. They get 14 feet tall and they'll have a nice thick trunk on them. I haven't seen many pictures of these that are that large with this intense red variegation on the foliage. And that's okay, with or without it, they're excellent bananas. It's a nice alternative to the Baju banana. I say alternative kind of loosely because the Baju banana, the Japanese fiber banana, is going to be more cold hardy than these, in my opinion, that's just my experience. If you're in zone seven, excellent option for some really nice height, some girthy trunks, pseudo stems, really exotic foliage, really something that's going to pop in the garden. Certainly worth trying if you're in zone six and you're really willing to put in the effort to go ahead and cut them back and make sure that they get that heavy mulching during the winter. When I was growing the Bengal tigers many years ago, I had had those come back from winter time without protection, but that was a really mild winter. I don't think it got any colder than, I think five or four degrees Fahrenheit may have been as cool as it got that winter. And they were large established plants that I had had for a few years. The first year is when you really, really want to go intense on the protection with these in the ground. It's when you want to really max it out. That's all. A little unboxing. Just wanted to talk about these bananas, mostly because I was really curious as to what they were going to look like, because like I had mentioned, this is a banana where you really just don't know what you're going to get. And even though they look pretty nice right now, I mean, this one's a little shabby, but that's okay. Get these into the grow space while they'll have some warmer temperatures and some brighter light. They'll take a few weeks to recover, may drop some leaves. That's pretty normal with bananas after they've been shipped. Sometimes they'll throw a complete and total fit and they'll need a few weeks to recover. That's really true of most plants that are shipped, but bananas especially, Oh my goodness. I've had so many bananas come in the mail that just looked like a stick with a bunch of rotten leaves on them. Half the time they don't even have any soil around them. When they're larger bananas, they will be shipped oftentimes just being cut and you just have a piece of that big banana corm that goes in the ground, which actually isn't the worst way to do it because those usually will stay firm. You can get them planted up. You don't have to worry about the stress on the leaves and all of those bad things that come along with shipping a plant. I like them. I think they're cute. They're little. They have some fun leaves on them. Hopefully they'll keep some of that pattern, but I don't expect them to. I like them either way. That's going to do it though. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. What are some cold hardy varieties of bananas that y'all really like to grow? Who has experience with the Sycamensis, with the Red Tigers, the Bengal Tigers, especially if you have any commentary about their variegation and what you've noticed. Like I said, usually I've noticed it's pretty subtle, 
pretty muted, but still lovely plants and a lot of fun to grow. All right, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Oh, that's that looked like it was squishy. That's pretty firm. That's a good sign. Bye-bye.